What's going on guys, Victor here. I'm out here, it is a absolutely beautiful day, and I'm joined by some friends. This is Guglielmo. What's up guys? And his girlfriend. Hey, Natalie. And of course you guys already know Brooke. We've been talking about fishing for like the last year on Instagram and stuff. He actually watches the videos and he's down here at a for and that's what one thing you guys have probably noticed. The inlet we went out of today was not what we usually go out of, that was Port Everglades. And we ran offshore, looked for some weed, looked for some stuff floating, didn't find anything. So we kind of gave up on the dolphin fishing, but we're gonna do something I'm very excited about. We're gonna go and try to catch some rosies, which I've never caught before. So let's see if we can put some in the boat. The secret for deep dropping is to use offset circle hooks. Oh no, you're telling us <laughs> all secrets. All your secrets revealed. I'm <laughs> that was supposed to be off camera, wasn't it? Yeah, I was like, what? Say off record. Off record. Off, off record. the record. Six pounds. Six pounds. Yeah, Ooh. weight and beads and drop it down with a whole squid and let's see how it goes. When I want to go for the, for instance, when I do the goldens, I use the whole squids. Like I use these ones. When I want to do like the, the blue lines, I used. I, oh, you recording me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I already tell you, dude. You're gonna be a YouTube superstar. Yeah. We're gonna love you. But um, yeah, I use the the smaller squids. But for the bigger one, for bigger stuff, I tend to use like a whole squid and everything. So, like when I do those, I actually use bigger hooks. Even I, bigger than this? Yeah, bro. I thought these look kind of big. No, bro. Like ginormous. You're gonna see. Like you catch the the roses right on the corner of the mouth. Really? Yeah. So now you just look around a little bit. All the way down. So now we're dropping it down. Oh, there we go, they'll bite. A few revolution, broke. Yeah, when they bite, yeah, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Now, hold, 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 hold. Okay. His spot's not failing. I know, I'm not pretty surprised, I'm pretty surprised. First drop. Well, for the first time, <laughs> oh, sure. you, you, this is always a spot. And well, He's actually saying earlier. earlier. Yeah, I know, I take it back, I take it back. <laughs> A lot of times they bite it only when the, the thing is all the way on the bottom. Yeah. Don't ask I like me it, why. I like to leave it a little slack. Yeah. And let them really munch it and then tighten up on yeah. it. Sometimes they bite only when he's levels up there. So first drop, what do you guys think? You got him? I think we got One two. Two? Yeah, two? Yeah, okay. two, it's a good number. Two? Yeah, all right, I'll so. go with I'll go with three. How about that? Hey. I'll feel confident. We're going to get three. Natalie's over there saying, eh, maybe one. <laughs> I'm optimistic. I would say two. I'd say two as well. So we just let our reel do the work for us. Press these two buttons right here and it just brings it all the way up. That's a decent yeah. size one, right? Yeah, that's a decent one. Ooh, I need to put the... Here, grab the line and just put it in the... In the put the weight in the rod holder. Dude, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's a good one, bro. So check this thing out, guys. First rosy I've ever seen in my entire life, and these are wild looking fish. It's kind of like half snapper, half grouper, huge eyeballs, ice cold when you first get them. And I'd say that they kind of look like a, a ling cod as far as like their, their body shape and their head and stuff is concerned, but really beautiful fish. Drop number two, about to go down. Oh, oh yeah, look yeah, at that. Yeah, we're gonna catch more than one this time. So, okay, when they bite like that, just lock it and just hold it too. Like when they bite, bring them up. Only one. Oh no, we got two. We got two. We got two. We got two. Oh, we have more. We lost them. Two rosies. Evil, evil little fish. They get you. Bro. All right, guys, we got three rosies now. I think we're gonna have a good dinner. Brick on the rod neck. Boys and girls. Ladies and ladies. All right, boys. boys and Google girls. Google says, all right, boys. boys. We got Natalie dropping down with the fourth drop of the day. So yeah, that drop right before, Brooke had one rosy on and Guglielmo went to grab it and it literally got off the hook at the very last second. And all the other fish we've caught like in the Bahamas, Queen Snapper and uh, Yellow Eyes, they usually float up and you guys have seen that in the videos before. But this time, I didn't know about it. Yeah, they, they never stay on top. As soon as they go and you lose down the hook, poof, down. You lose them right away, so yeah. And always the big ones. The small ones you never lose. The big ones are the ones that always tell you bye-bye and <laughs> you lose them, it's so annoying. Yeah. So normally these fish, like the rosies and stuff, that spool is constantly going. They can't pull against the drag, but when you get a bigger fish and the spool stalls, 
you know you got a good one on. Yeah, it's fighting. Unless we got five, it's a good fish. What? Two. It's a really big one. Uh -huh, man, man, they, they fought though. Yeah. And we had one more. I'm telling you, we had some. We had a lot of nice ones. I'll uh, take that. That sucks. There you go. Yeah. That sucks. Ah, uh, what? Oh, those are nice ones. Yeah, I want a gold. All right guys, so this is gonna be like the fifth drop we're dropping down. We got six pounds of lead down, going straight down. And the whole thing with deep dropping too is, is Google Ammo is driving the boat and you want the line to sit straight up and down because you have so much slack because we are fishing so deep. We're like 900, right? Yeah. 900, yeah. 900 Nine, wait, 925. So you really want to minimize the amount of slack you have and that's why you need that giant weight. And that's why you fish these electric reels because we have done manual. It's not that big of a deal but it does get tiring. So if you're trying to put meat in the boat, an electric reel is definitely the way to go. Bring yeah. it up, bring it up, bring it yeah. up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Oh yeah, we got him. So what we do is we, we want to get as many as possible on the hook. So you kind of, it's like a balancing act of letting it go slack, letting him eat it, and then setting the hook. And you got to set the hook with tension. So you got to reel it up. Oh, they're there. So you're trying to like pick at them one at a time, two at a time, and you try to load up and get the whole stringer full. We lost four. Three of them. Yeah, one eight of them. That's the most we've gotten, isn't it? Yeah, and we had two, they beat the other two. That's Hell a new yeah. Record. Uh, yeah, see, they hold the hooks. Oh, that one actually has a problem to the eye. Look at the white eye. Which one? The oh, one yeah, he does. He's oh, got some yeah. kind of thing. So we got three rosies. We it's the most lost, we've gotten. Probably lost two or three. Since oh yeah, all our plate. baits gone, oh, isn't wow. it? Yeah. Lately we've been one too. every other time we've gotten it up, we've had bait on our hooks, but this time we got no bait on our hooks. That one we almost lost it too. I was telling Google Elmo earlier, I was surprised because usually when we deep drop we use a lot smaller hooks, but these are really wide. These guys got really huge mouths for their size. So it's no problem for them to swallow a hook this big. All right guys, we're back at the flay table and I gotta give a huge shout out to Googly Elmo. We have been talking about fishing for a long time, finally made it happen, and he put me on my first ever rosies, these black belly rose fish, absolutely beautiful. They just look like they're gonna taste good and it's just one of those fish that you see come up and you're just it just lights up your day. It just shows you how absolutely beautiful the ocean is and they're a real treat because they do live in 900 feet of water and if you kind of look their anatomy you know how an anatomy dictates uh, fish's function and a lot of stuff and you you see all these deep water these deep drop fish yellow eyes queen snapper they have really big eyeballs and that's to allow to, as much light into their pupil as possible so they can see and these are it's they they resemble more like a grouper than they do a snapper and they have huge mouths for their size. You guys might have seen we were using pretty big circle hooks, but that's because they can really fit them in there. And one really neat thing I thought about these fish was the fact that the inside of their mouth is completely black. Um, I don't know what that's from. I don't know if that's for some type of function, but overall, I'm just really happy to be doing this catch and cook for you guys. Actually made a list the other day and I'm up to like 55 or 56 species that I cooked in 2018 so add this one to the list, and as, bit, and as I've been saying, we are going to cook them all on this channel. So let's go ahead, fillet these guys up, and then we're gonna make a really good fish pasta dish with some clams. These guys, since they're kind of small, what I do is I start right behind the head, I work my knife point to the other end, right here by the belly, and I'm just gonna work it down slowly along the back one. You gotta really make sure you're not going through the bone and just gliding right above it, just like that. And we're gonna go all the way up, cut the tail off, and we should just have stuck right there we should have a nice fillet just like so so you just glide right on top of it and there you go and then there is that black belly which they're notorious for so we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side right behind the head down to the belly start right here by the head above our rib cage and then along our back one, I'm kind of using my left hand to kind of hold my, um, uh, pull against the tension of my knife. And I'm gonna go right down. Just like that. There you go. And then that's what's left of your Rosie. Okay, so let's check his belly and see if there's anything inside. Let's get in all these guts. It's 
belly looks pretty empty to me. They probably regurgitate a lot of stuff on their way up too. Very easy to skin. There's one filet. Let's trim this black belly right here. Skin this up. And there you go. There are our rosy fillets right there. Very similar. I still got to take the bones out, but very similar. I wouldn't really say similar to a hogfish. I'd say they're flakier than a hogfish. Definitely more firm than a yellowtail. Very unique texture, I'd say, for a fish. Good white. Doesn't smell at all. Very minimal, if any, bloodline. There's really no bloodline. A few bones we got to take out, but overall, looking good. So here is our mountain of rosy fillets. This is from Seven Fish, so it's a good amount of fillets. You know, they're not very big, but they sure are gonna be tasty. Voice over Vic coming at you with another catch, clean, and cook. So we got our grape tomatoes chopped up and now we are going to dice up some garlic. Now I'm gonna be making a, uh, not really a red sauce, not really a white sauce, but kind of in between style pasta dish for our beautiful rosies. And we have some parsley and basil being chopped up. I would say about a quarter cup of each, about half of a whole head of garlic, and then that was probably around two cups of grape tomatoes. I do wanna make a good sauce, a very, uh, substantial sauce so I want to make sure I have enough ingredients now this is kind of where I was debating whether or not I wanted to cook my fish directly in my broth my pasta sauce or if I wanted to kind of pan fry them and I opted for the pan fried method just because I wanted to kind of get the fish you know kind of doing its own thing so we're gonna just lightly coat them with some flour some black pepper garlic powder and salt very easy seasoned flour gonna go straight into some avocado oil in our stainless steel pan and I didn't cook these for very long probably two to three minutes on each side just get them a nice brown crust All right, so we took our rosies out of the pan, putting some olive oil into the pan, the exact same pan to really develop all those flavors together. Let that oil heat up and then add some garlic, not for very long, only about 30 seconds, kind of toast a little bit. And then we're gonna deglaze our pan with some red wine. I believe it was a Merlot. And I did about a half a cup, maybe three quarters a cup of wine. And then we let our wine mixture reduce by about half. And then here is where things just really start to pop and you get all these colors involved. We add our grape tomatoes in and bring it up to a boil, kind of get those tomatoes just to release their juices, soften them up a little bit. And then now I think this is where real flavor comes in. So if you guys have never cooked with clams before, I love, love clam juice. It's cheap. It's a great way to add salinity to your dish to add real flavor and just a real good seafood flavor to any pasta dish or a broth, really any type of seafood dish. I love clam juice. So I added two, two cans, I think they were eight ounces, and I would have added more because I was actually cooking for a lot of people and I was a little bit low on juice, but I would add even more as it's just a really easy way to increase the volume of your sauce. Brought it up to a boil and then you guys saw I just added the parsley and fresh basil bring it up to a boil again and then just for a little bit of heat just kind of get your mouth to you know salivate a little bit we add some crushed red pepper in there and now so i was at publix and i'm making this sauce i want to have a good dinner and i saw these clams they were pretty inexpensive so i picked up some clams and i thought it'd be perfect for our sauce not only are they going to season our sauce a little bit more but they just lively up your dish and as you guys see these don't cook very long. They cook about five minutes in that boiling sauce and you see all those clamshells will open up. They will definitely let you know when they are done and ready. 
And then to finally just top off our sauce, I just did a whole stick of butter. And I mean, this fed a lot of people. It was, I believe, five or six people. And then also we had a ton of leftovers. So relatively light in calorie meal, delicious, just full of flavor, full of seafood flavor. That's kind of that color of that sauce. And if you're wondering what I did with the rosies from earlier, since they were a little bit cold, I set them aside, I reheated them in that sauce and it came out great. Now, Brookie, my girlfriend, who also has a YouTube channel, she made a wonderful bruschetta rosy dish, which I will link her video in the description box below. And then here is my pasta, going to be topped with our rosy. And you know what? I'm not even gonna talk, just enjoy the rest of the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching, as always. And I'll be seeing all you guys, my land sharks, in that next video.